All righty, welcome um, everyone. And uh, you are joining us here today. Hi, Lee, thanks for joining us. Sorry, our start was a little off. I clicked the start on Zoom button before I got us published to Facebook. So um, you just got a little bit of boring at the beginning of the, the Zoom uh, broadcast there. So I apologize to anybody who's watching here on Zoom. Um, and, but I invite all of you to uh, pop some questions into the Q&A box on Zoom or into the comments on Facebook and we will try and answer them. But um, before we get into questions, I should probably tell you who we're here with. So we are here with our dear friend, Terry. Um, Terry um, has become an incredible friend of Pad's. We're gonna talk more about all of that. Um, but he is a volunteer uh, with a former empl uh, employee now retired with American Airlines. So he is a volunteer with the Puppies in Flight program. So that's kind of, you know, how we came to meet Terry, but there's so much more to the story. So we're really excited about this interview. I'm super excited because this man has become a dear friend over the years. So it's lovely to see his face. Thank you. Um, but Terry, um, I'm going to ask you the same question I ask everybody. How is it that you became part of the Pads family? Uh, basically, so from the get-go of my involvement in Puppies in Flight, uh, one of the fir first transports I did was for Pads. And I took uh, one of the female breeding stock out of Southeastern Guide Dogs from Vancouver back to uh, Central Florida when she was due to go back home. So that's how I first got, had any knowledge of pads. And uh, I started early on in my transport work, um, kind of trying to identify, you know, um, you know, like at least look at the program's websites every once in a while and see what they're about. Because we don't get too much information. We just know that the dog needs to be picked up at airport A and dropped off at airport B, but puppies in flight then. So it, it, we don't, we, sometimes there'll be a short description like the, you know, puppy headed towards service work or, you know, the, uh, adult dog returning for training, whatever. But that's about all we really know. So, um, you know, that's where I started getting familiar with PADS is through their website too. And, and they had a lot to do in 2016. So <laughs> that was my first year. Uh, I started in late 2015 transporting. And then in early 2016 is when I took my first trips. I've been going strong with you guys ever since. Yeah, and we were talking before we came on the call here and I, I just can't help but smile. So you were telling me how many dogs you've transported, but also what percentage of those dogs were, were PADS dogs, either leaving PADS to go to other schools or coming to PADS. Right. Uh, wanna share those stats with us? Yeah, so what did I have written? Yeah, so out of, I've done, a total of 73 trans, you know, individual dogs transports, which doesn't always actually equate year to year and never actually has for the five years that I've been doing it to the number of trips, because sometimes I'll do like a back to back trip. Well, it's one trip, but it's two dogs. So it's kind of just that, uh, that out of all those 73, two are from pads is right at in the middle of 39 of the dogs that have been trained transported so so i i um i, I told him that it was a great honor that we are the school that has gotten the the, the most transports from Terry. Okay. um so um we have some competitive rivalry i think i think in our in our blood here so <laughs> we're feeling very honored um that, that uh so many of our dogs and i you know i we were talking about just some of the dogs that you've, you've brought to us. And I've got some pictures here. I'm just gonna bring up for a second here. Uh, just bear with me. Oops, hang on one second. Hopefully this works. Just bear with me, everybody. Hopefully there you go. it's full screen. So um, Terry was digging through to try and find some photos of the dogs that he's transported. And one, I, I'm personally, um, you know, touched. So he uh, um, brought me Red, who was one of the, one of the puppies that I raised. Um, so that one's super memorable, but he sent these other pictures. So Soren um, went to 
um, another school. And actually that last photo at the end isn't Norris. And now I'm confused because I don't remember who that last one is. The one in the middle is Norris who came to pads. So Soren went, I think to Southeastern Guide Dogs. I could be wrong, but he flew. I believe that's right. I was, and then Norris came to us. And then Pippa was also one of our dogs that went off. So these are all dogs that left pads and went to other schools. So Hobbs and Murray. Um, and then um, Terry came and picked up. So Terry came and joined us for our gala in 2019. So we were very honored to have him as our guest um, there. And so that's where that photo is from. And then uh, he transported um, Rainier and Maple, who were two of Katie's uh, puppies. Actually, at the time, she was uh, Pad's Mesa and became Ican Maple when she, she went down there. And they've both now graduated. So, but tell us, um, Terry, a little bit about why do you do this? Why do you fly puppies? Other than obviously you get to cuddle puppies. That's the- Oh only. yeah, that's <laughs> the fun part. Well, really it's, I've, I have looked or known intuitively for a long, long time that at some point in my life, I wanted to be able to like somehow assist in this world of assistance dogs or assistance animals and I, I never knew when that was going to be I'm actually still um, and it, it has been and will always probably remain uh, this particular program allowing me to fulfill a promise to a very close relative who was not able to uh, take advantage of a service animal before they passed so it's kind of a personal thing for me to to do this and and it's just a big I don't even say it's a win 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 it's just a win <laughs> you know for yeah for everybody and also I just say it's a win but um so that's and this was actually the second um opportunity I've had when I was with American to do assist with animal transports and the first being right after Hurricane Katrina I happened to be on assignment over at headquarters from my my home department and uh, another organization came to the company um, that's run by the flight attendants and they asked American to see if they could uh, find employees that would help transport animals out of South Louisiana that have been abandoned after, after the big hurricane down there. So I actually wound up eventually taking over, since I was at headquarters already, I just took over the whole spreadsheet. That, okay, so we got to get how many, how many puppies do, or how many animals you want to transport on which plane on which day, that kind of thing. Because so we had to be really, uh, as you can imagine, we had to be fairly um, judicious about how many uh, dogs were showing up or cats were showing up on any given flight out of those stress stations already. So I, I just kind of babysat that. And then I, that spreadsheet, and then I did several transports of my own. So that's how I first got involved in this puppies in flight after. Um, we, our merger with US Airways became final. They put this out. I had no, no idea the program had been around, didn't know a thing about it and has been around since 1999, way back in the America West days. So it's, it's really just a tool I use to kind of um, fulfill that promise and then keep that going as far into the future as I can. So we'll see how long it continues where we are allowed now as retirees to do it. And we've been told until further notice. So I expect I'll be around for a while. <laughs> well, we oh. were all very scared uh, when when uh, the news came through that you were retiring. And at that time, um, I think both you and Sharon were retiring around the same time, who are is our other very favorite uh, puppies and flight volunteer. And uh, yeah, so we were quite worried um, when the news came through that you guys wouldn't be able to continue in retirement. So we're glad that that changed and you continue to transport our puppies. Um, Laura just posted a comment. We love and appreciate all you do for PADS and our sister schools, Terry. We appreciate you and really miss your visits. I think that was, you know, I think we talk a lot of PADS about this kind of larger community we're part of. And so for those of you watching, if you're not familiar, PADS is part of, we're accredited through an organization called Assistance Dogs International or ADI. And so it's really a partnership. Puppies in Flight was a partnership between American Airlines and ADI um, to kind of connect all our schools together. And we're transporting these puppies often during really critical socialization periods where 
putting them in cargo could be really um, traumatic for them. It's, it's not a good time. So an eight week old puppy uh, or a 10 week old puppy is, is not a good time to be having a really stressful experience. So these amazing volunteers that are very loving and caring that kind of make sure that, you know, they're happy every step of the way. So um, for those of you that have just joined us, I see a few um, new faces popping on here. We're here with um, our friend Terry um, from Puppies in Flight. Um, and so he has transported 30, 39 PADS dogs, either two or from PADS. Was my number right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, in, a, in addition to many, many others for um, other schools. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A box or type them into the comments on Facebook and um, we will uh, strong arm Terry into sharing them. <laughs> um, but Terry, tell me a little bit about what it what it's like. What is the process like when you pick up a puppy? So, you know, Doug or one of our other volunteers, one of our other staff or volunteers hands off a puppy to you. Um, what happens from there? What does the process look like flying with a puppy? Some right. So watching probably haven't done done that. Right. So basically, I just we just do a handoff on the leash, and once basically, really, when I when I take a dog, I just kind of let them be around me for you know a couple of minutes, you know, let them s smell me, try to figure out, you know, who I am because I'm going to be with them for the next several hours and they're getting ready to be jerked away from the person that they've been with for whatever amount of time before I get them. So I just kind of spend some time uh, there. Plus, I have to always have all the paperwork transferred. So I would just take a few minutes to repack everything before we get over to the lovely TSA <laughs> to, or to the uh, security lines. So um, it, that's basically where, it's, where the process starts. And then you got to just move on to check in. And it's, uh, I basically use the, uh, uh, I don't even, I'm not sure these days I'll have to double check next week or in two weeks when I do my next transport that whether the kiosks that everybody else can check in on if I can still, if they've upgraded that, because we used to have to go to the ticket counter every single time. But regardless, they we get checked in, and then um, half the time I've got checked in baggage, half the time I don't. It depends on how long the trip is, um, and then we then we head over to, like I said, the lovely TSA, where <laughs> that can be a bit challenging, um, especially with the puppies because. They don't, you know, I've got anywhere from a right at an eight week old up to normally uh, four months old, 16 weeks. So it depends. It Even at 16 weeks, it's hard to get them to sit for you while you go through the metal detector and then have them come through. That's it, There's been a couple of instances where that's occurred, but it's just easier to all the way around to carry them through. Uh, uh, not the big scanner thing but the, just the regular metal detector and then go on from there but it's because we've traveled with so much food and supplies and everything it's they have to almost every single time kind of do an extra scan of thing. oh it's a it's a it's a two kilo bag of, of food you know and it it sets everything off because it, it's so dense they can't tell what it is so we had to go through a lot <laughs> of that and then get redressed both me and the dog and so then go on from there over to the gates to, to check in and, and go from there. Yeah. So um, um, I, I have to uh, share here. So Janine, who's one of our volunteers that I'm sure you've met many times, Terry. Yes. She Hi, Janine. Puppies. And she just emailed me a quick photo of a recent pickup. And I'm not sure which dog this is. Maybe Janine can pop a note through which dog this is um, that you delivered recently, but not very recently, because based on your hair, <laughs> it was uh, pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but this is how I remember seeing you the most, just arriving with a little pup in arms kind of thing. But it's such a great picture. I had to bring it up here. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send it to you, Terry. But um, okay. yeah, so what comes next? So uh, you get through all your security and such? Yeah, then we get to the gates. And of course, on, on, with puppies in flight, we travel um, 
the one of the provisions is, is we travel standby. So we have to just kind of wait around at the gate, just like any other pa uh, standby passenger trying to get on any flight any day. And it, these days, it's, it helps a lot because we have the like the the boards and the and the displays, the the computer displays, and all that we know whether we're basically whether we're going to get on or not. And um, then, so once we get a boarding pass, generally I try to get there early enough to uh, say once I've even got my boarding pass that I'll they'll almost always graciously let us pre-board so I can kind of like get the dog settled, you know, so before, and, and depending on where I am, where they place me on the, in the cabin. Um, Cause I like to be on either the front row in coach, just the, the, the bulkhead there or in the very, very last row of the airplane. That way I'm kind of like out of everybody's way you know, I don't have to stroll the dog up and down the aisle, but wants to get on and get off the airplane. And then, and so uh, that's where I like to be. But of course, I, I have, since we fly standby, I sit where they tell me to sit. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but recently it's been okay um, because the flights have not been very full in the last year. Or so it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's been easier to get like, even, even then, uh, trips I did earlier in the in the past month, I've had a whole row in coach, and it's like, well, I've needed it because some of these 80, 85 pound dogs are like, it's kind of hard to get to curl up into yeah. a ball on themselves yeah. sometimes. And that's an important note too. So puppies in flight is not just puppies. Sometimes yeah. it's breeders that are going to another school yeah. for rotation. Sometimes it's adult dogs that are being returned to go into training. So some of the, our sister schools have puppy raising regions that are, you know, far away from the campus. And so sometimes it's flying that dog to, so they can return for advanced training. So it's not just, not just all baby puppies. No, so. I'd say, I'm thinking maybe I've, I've th thought, I need to go back to and double check, but I would say probably a good 60 to 65% of them are in the eight week to 16 week old range. And then some more uh, puppies that are somewhat older, uh, probably maybe 20% of them are the adult breeders, both male and female. Yeah. And then the, the rest is that little percentage that they may be going back to whatever other training, what have you, yeah. so. And I remember you were saying the first transport you ever did to pets was Freya. So Freya, not Freya, our current breeding dog, oh, no. um, but it was a dog from Southeastern Guide Dogs, I think, that came and did a rotation at PADS and had a litter um, here at PADS. And uh, so she came as a, I believe, a pregnant adult and um, was delivered. Oh, to I didn't know that. Had, yeah. had her, or maybe she was bred here. I'm not sure. Yeah, but that's had, her litter, had her litter here and then, uh, and then flew back after her puppies were born. So, um, and we've, you know, we've had some of our dogs go off um, and have their litters at other schools on occasion. So those would be included in puppies in flight. So, um, and I'm just, sorry, I'm just scrolling through trying to figure out the, where the question is. And just started. another note on Freya, when soon yeah, as soon yeah, as go we got off the flight down there in Tampa, you take this little uh, trolley from the out lane terminal to the main terminal. And as soon as the doors opened up on that tram going back to the, to the main terminal, Joel Clark and his wife were there to pick who, that who Freya stays with yeah. and was there to pick him up. And as soon as she heard that, his voice, I couldn't even control the dog anymore. <laughs> it was like, I'm yeah. home, I'm home. Hey, hi, mommy, hi, daddy. Kind of thing. Yeah, so, that must I have been quite it. the reunion. Yeah, very much. I know they missed her a lot. And I'm sure, I mean, these dogs, they're living, breathing creatures, right? And they love their yeah. people. So that's very cool to be part of that too. So Mary is asking, uh, what can you do to alleviate ear pressure on descent? Have you ever had a pup who's had issues with the going up and down? No, um, <clears throat> I really have in all these transports. I do not notice that they have problems at all, either, either, go, either you know, going up or down. I think I've noticed a little bit of kind of reactions on when we're descending, which I think may be related to the air pressure because it seems like they want to um, 
instinctively yawn. And I know you can do that as a human too and get that, those, that balance back in the, in, but so, but I've never had any puppy or well, adult react fun, to that. Fun, fun tip for anybody that flies with dogs. Um, we learned this, um, Laura's watching right now and I'm sure she's just laughing and shaking her head. So she flew, uh, she was at a conference and she was flying back with Rogue, who's one of our stud dogs and poor Rogue, his ears plugged. And so he's about, a, he's a big guy. He's like 70 pounds or so. And he was trying to like climb her and he was hysterical because oh. his ears were plugged. So we learned on that trip that if you ever have a dog who's hysterical because their ears are plugged and it hurts, that you close their mouth and then you put your mouth over their nose and blow in and it'll reverse the pressure. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so if you ever have that problem, now you know. Um, <laughs> but it's good to know that so few of the dogs have had any kind of issues. I've never had an issue with any of the dogs I've flown with, but but I was very grateful to have that tip in case it ever happened. Um, I figured people would look at you kind of crazy um, if you were essentially giving a dog mouth to mouth to <laughs> unplug their ears. But I think I... <laughs> <laughs> Laura shared the story about how unhappy people were about this 70 pound vocalizing. Um, her chest was all like clawed from him trying to like climb up into her lap. And so, yeah, it was an adventure. So uh, Mary's asking what happens when they, when they need to pee. Um, have you ever had that problem? Or Yeah, it, it depends on when and where uh, they want to go. The, the, the puppies, um, I basically for a variety, more than one reason. I just let them go wherever they want to go whenever they want to go. Now, if it's on the plane, I've already got the, the pee pads spread out and like other absorbent material, <laughs> whatever, whatever to, uh, just in case. Um, on, in the airports, uh, I, I try to keep them as much on tile as possible because it's just easier to clean up. But there's been a lot of times where it's like, you know, I'll look down at the dog and go, can you just give me 12 more feet till we get over on the tile, please? Nope, nope, I want to go right here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Forget your 12 feet. <laughs> so you just deal with it. You got to, they always have cleanup material. I bring a little bit that the programs, the ship, the sending dog uh, program um, always sends like cleanup materials and extra pee pads, what have you. So you just absorb and it's it. Part of, it's part of our process too on the front end that like typically before we hand a puppy off to a puppy's in flight volunteer for a flight, they've been fasted for a period of time so that, you know, they're kind of going onto the flight empty. Now, obviously for like a long flight, you know, the, you can't, you know, withhold water for, you know, 12 hours kind of mm -hmm. thing. So they will have a little bit, but, um, but it's just trying to manage that input so that, you don't have a puppy who's, you know, back teeth or floating kind of thing. Yeah, Laura's saying exactly. it's funny now, but it was not so funny at the time. Poor <laughs> it's never funny, but I have the weirdest thing since um, I didn't even have any accidents in the air, airport for about my first 10 or 12 um, um, trips. And then after that, it's just like flooding everything. It's like, okay, I just expect it and just bring plenty of stuff to clean up. But, but, and because the adults, basically the adults, um, if they can hold it or whatever, I'll, and because almost all of my trips, in fact, all of them truly are at, at least one connection. So we've got an opportunity for the adult dog to go to the uh, animal relief area where I wouldn't do that with a puppy because they're not, full, if they're not fully vaccinated. So um, we're very much encouraged not to take those dogs through to yeah. other dog areas, that, you know, yeah. So uh, then, and, but some of the dogs, even it's weird. Some of them will go right away. They'll look forward to that little break. And I've been in DFW airport um, and taken one dog, one adult dog to the pet relief area before we changed terminals. And we couldn't, I couldn't even get that dog, dog to go within 12 feet of the door at that place. Cause he has smelt something and he goes, uh -uh, I'm not going in there. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've learned a lot that. about how they yeah. react. And, yeah and such as that when they need to go and I'm pretty good at guessing but it's still to me that's yeah. still an art just to know yeah I know once they start circling real bad that's a that's a bad sign so yeah 
So um, Shauna's asking, what does it take to become um, a travel assistant? So I'm assuming uh, doing the role that you do. So um, is the first requirement being an American Airlines employee? Yes. yes. Um, it's unfortunately, yeah, that it's, it's truly just a, the, an employee, an active employee program. And at the moment we're doing some of us retirees that have done a lot of transports before we retired have been allowed to continue on. And I think that was actually initiated on, as a request coming out of Assistance Dogs International, to, to, as I recall. Um, so, but yeah, and then once you're, what you can do is go, we have people go on to the company internet and there's a page specifically for puppies in flight. You go to, the, we go to the page, send an email to headquarters. Oh, I'd like to volunteer for this program. Um, and they put your name in the, in the hat and they sort of randomly select um, every year or so a, another group of volunteers. Because <clears throat> some people stick around for a long time and some people are just maybe have, want to do this once a year or whatnot. So that's kind of how we get selected. And then they go to used to be when I went, I think it was a six hour training course. I think Patriots and Paws, or Paws for Patriots out of um, Rockwall, Texas came over to the airport and used actually some of our simulators where we actually had the, the, the mock-up of an airplane and they brought the dogs in and taught us all kinds of how, how to, you know, loose leash walk and that kind of thing, so. Good stuff, well, that's awesome. Such a great program and, and so amazing of American Airlines to kind of take this yes. on and um, and certainly the staff that take it on because, you know, it's a lot of time and I think about, you know, it's not just getting on a plane and dropping off a puppy and going home like you often are are here um, at least overnight, um, which we don't complain about at all, but <laughs> but it's a lot of time out of your life and schedule. So we appreciate that. So we have a ton of questions. So I'm going to just fire okay. at you here. Sure, so sure. Go ahead. Um, try to keep it short. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. It's all good. So uh, Diane just says, I can hardly imagine a long day of multiple flights with some of the tiny spirited pups. Uh, you must have had some interesting adventures. Any adventures to share? Um, adventure wise, I think they are. They really, to me, they're all adventures. It's not, it, it, they can get to be awfully long days. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, they, as I think the quote unquote Webster's definition of a puppy is they sleep, eat, sleep, play and poop. So once they've played for a little while, like specifically these eight week old to, to four month old types that I generally carry, um, they're ready to go, okay, I need a nap, you know, and the vast majority of the transports, either puppy or adult or what, what, get, what have you, because it happens to humans too, and they get on that plane up to altitude, they're, they kind of take the fact like, oh, wake me up when we get there. You know? So, so yeah. they just like crash either right in your lap if, if I'm holding them, because we're allowed to hold them uh, from, if they're, as, if they're as small as a two-year-old infant, we can still hold them in our laps. And then if not, they'll, they stay at our feet in the floor. Yeah. And generally, I'll, even if I have one in my lap, I'll try to kind of let it slinky down onto the floor when it when it tries to go to sleep or close its eyes, and so that's how uh, <laughs> kind of that part of it. Yeah. Um. So we have another. So Janine just popped a couple notes on one. She thinks that puppy that I showed in the photo earlier was Bonnie, um, who, uh -huh. uh, the Bonds, um, who is still a lovely member of our Pads Village. Um, and then uh, you also brought Jericho and Dusty on the same trip and brought uh, Max and Yesterday who have been renamed. And I think Yesterday was actually Valentine. I don't, I don't remember who Max became, but. Valentine, I, I never made it with Valentine from Southeastern. I went down. Oh, different Valentine. So Yesterday ah. became Valentine here, but there was another Valentine that became something else when they arrived here. So it was very confusing because it was all around the same time. So there was a couple <laughs> who's original name was Valentine, but uh, I, think, I think yesterday was Valentine, like the one that is now Pad's Valentine. This is not confusing at all. No, not so, at all. Anyway, but um, I'm not sure of the name, but somebody's asking at the beginning of COVID, was puppies in flight halted for a period of time? 
No, we, not at the very beginning. Um, I had for 2020, I think I went out through, um, like I did, I did three transports in 2020 and they were all for pads, all from Canada back to the States. Um, I filed it away somewhere, but after, and they were all done by, um, I think those, those three were actually all done by mid February or shortly thereafter, maybe the early March. Um, so yeah, I, I, I we, I kept seeing some emails come out with requests for transports after that, but not for very long. And I think at one point it was a decision kind of mutually between ADI and the, yeah. and the airline. And I, I don't know, that's kind of on the, you know, I don't know how they made the decision to said, let's just stop for a while. Uh, uh, I think it kind of made a lot of sense because the schools didn't even want a lot of, uh, I know that I heard this personally, a lot of the schools didn't even want their own employees or their own volunteers, even to go to the airports. So at that point, it was like, okay, let's, let's just back off for a while. And then I want to say it was August or September. And the lady that handles uh, our at um, uh, Guide Dog Foundation out on Long Island in New York, the contact that kind of gets all the requests for transports and our offers for transports. She sent out an email to all of us and said, okay, America, we, we can start transporting again. So I, I want to say it was around Labor Day, up or US, sorry, uh, around late August, early September, I think we kind of yeah. picked back up again. Yeah, and so for those that don't know that are watching, a lot of the ADI schools also halted their breeding programs for a period of time. So there was less dogs to transport as well. Yeah. Um, we There has been challenges, even just getting dogs, like with people, getting dogs across the border um, one way or the other. We've done a fair number of transports kind of down either from Washington state or down into Washington state in recent months. But I, we haven't, I don't think we've flown any dogs with puppies in flight for quite some time. So, um, yeah, so it, you know, obviously with the rest of the world starting to write itself, um, things will, will resume soon. Um, and Rafi just jumped on that. It was her that asked the question about COVID, but she said, Bonnie's with me right now for a visit. Uh -huh. she, woke up, she woke up when she heard her name. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's interesting how many dogs um, you, your time has touched. And, um, and I know that we're kind of getting close to time here. So if anybody has any last minute burning questions, you can type them into the Q&A box or into the um, comments on Facebook. Um, and we will um, try and answer them. Um, there's lots of, I'll let you go read the comments on the Facebook page after Cherry, but lots of thank yous and uh, some from kind of friends far and wide, um, different You're most welcome. Before. You know, so, one of the, I, I will say one of the uh, things that, that in, in addition to getting to be, you know, to have fun on the plane, everything being cute, you know, with the puppies and all, that um, it's, this has taught me a couple of really important qualities that I is like okay I and I, th I think I show this maybe with a lot of the uh, puppy raisers or the um, the whelping hosts or even the puppy trainers it's like the p word patience it taught me a lot of patience and even though I'm only with the with these poor animals you know eight ten maybe 16 hours if we're overnight or whatever but they've still taught me a lot a lot of patience so yeah. and well and I think the thing that I love about you, Terry, is um, is how invested you are in each one of these puppies that you transport. And I, okay, it's surprising me now. I'm getting emotional about this, but um, but Terry sent me a program because he went and attended the graduation of two of Katie's pups that he transported at ICANN, and so that was just huge. Like, but to have that level of investment where you then go and kind of follow those dogs along throughout their careers and see them and get to meet, you know, their future clients and kind of see where they are. Um, and that's very cool. And we love that you kind of closed the loop with us as well. Cause that was, that was a really neat thing for us to get, but you shared something with me the other night. And I think it might be a nice way, um, 
to kind of close the call is you have a little bit of a tradition on the descent of your flight with your puppies, don't oh, you? Oh, goodness. You're going to make me do this. I'm going to make you share because we do this and our, the volunteers listening will will totally get this. Yeah. So, I, I'm, I, so, so really, um, like I say, you know, there's none of my trips that are not just one single flight. So on the generally on the, uh, uh, the on the last flight where we're coming into our destination city where I dropped the dog off with, <clears throat> excuse me, right before we start this, uh, this descending, I'll take the puppy up and just curl up with it, you know, noggin to noggin or with one of the adult dogs kind of crouching down and just kind of having a, a moment with the dog to pass along my best from the, you know, my universe and to his new universe and send him on his way and just wish him the best for uh, learning what they need to learn. And that's kind of my way of just kind of, okay, I've done my part, buddy. You go on, you go on and do yours now, do your best. So, yeah. And, you know, I think it's one of those things. And what I love about these tune in Tuesdays is we truly, we talk about this all the time. It takes a village to raise a puppy and you are part of that village, Terry. And oh my God, without all your volunteers that are coming to the airport at every time of the day, <laughs> day or night, I just yeah. have to really thank the volunteers too. So very much. So. Yeah. Well, I know that um, Janine has come and met you many a time and, uh, She's watching today. And uh, yeah, we have some amazing volunteers that kind of help facilitate all of this. And it's not always an easy process. The dogs coming from the U.S. have to go through customs and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes there's delays. And so you're sticking around for a really long time and you miss a flight home and <laughs> all those adventures. So, but, um, oh, hang on. There's more comments coming in here. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty weird when, when you've been to Canada so many times because our morning flight from Dallas year round basically arrives at the exact same time, 11, 15 to 1145 sometime along with, with every other uh, city in, in Asia flights are depart arriving. So the, the immigration customs holiday gets pretty busy. That's around noon. And it, it's uh, one time I came up there from, from Southeastern guide dogs in Tampa and uh, when I was in Tampa, they swiped my passport since they knew I was going international and uh, gave me the boarding pass to go through security and all and get on your way. Well, when I get up to Vancouver, sorry if I'm talking too fast, sorry, um, that he swipe, he, he scans my passport and he goes, not even Mr. Reese. This is how you know you've been to Canada <laughs> so many times. Terry, why are you trying to get into this country with a passport that doesn't work? <laughs> <laughs> not even Mr. Hurries that gets how friendly they are up there. So yeah. I just love coming up there. So we got to, it's, I don't know, passports just stopped working. I thought, oh my God, they're going to deport me and I'm never going to get back into Canada ever again. <laughs> don't even say such words. And I think Janine was actually waiting for me out there. And, and at one point they had to push me over to the big immigrant, like as if I was actually immigrating to Canada and go in and they had to, go through the whole nine yards and it's the whole time I couldn't get in touch with the person that was waiting for me on the other side. <laughs> oh, gracious. Well, and yes, yeah, such patience from our volunteers on both sides, but also such patience on your part to roll with all these punches. So thank you everybody who's watched today and joined us and asked questions and um, we appreciate you and Terry, thank you so much. This is You're just most great welcome. for me. And Hope to see y'all soon. Yeah, ditto. Soon, soon, soon. And the lovely Lanny, who is typing furiously behind the scenes here so that this is closed captioned. And uh, thank you so much for your efforts to keep this accessible. Um, we really appreciate you. And uh, we will see everybody next week. And um, next week, um, we have a couple of our volunteers coming on. And I apologize, I should be prepared. Um, but I can't remember at this very moment who it is, but your reminder email, if you're signed up at pads slash or pads.ca slash tune in Tuesdays, um, you can register there and get an email notification each week about who our guest is. It'll also give you the Zoom link so you can log in and um, have uh, the closed captioning. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Terry. Um, we will talk soon, I'm sure. You bet. Be safe, and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon with a puppy in arms. Absolutely. 
Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.